Now, I consider myself to be a pretty avid college football fan. How knowledgeable I am, or am not, uh, is a constant subject of debate. But I am an avid college football fan. And you can always learn something. Minnesota Golden Gophers, head coach P.J. Fleck, up today, uh, the 2020 college football preview and game-by-game prediction for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And I think everyone knows by now who P.J. Fleck is, right? The head coach of Minnesota. Even if you didn't know who he was at the beginning of last season, you definitely know who he is now. And uh, if you don't know anything at all about Minnesota, you probably still have heard the term, row the boat. Now, a lot of times I like to start these videos off with, uh, you know, a joke or something funny or, uh, you know, needling a team some kind of way or or something. I decide, I'll admit, I'm an avid college football fan. Like I said, how how much I know or not, you know, is debatable. Uh, But this phrase, row the boat, I'm not afraid to tell you. I had no idea where it came from or what it meant. I I knew it was something that PJ Flex said all the time, sort of his team slogan or motto. I had no clue where it came from, the origins, what it meant, anything like that. I decided to look it up today as I got ready to sit down to do this preview and prediction video. And um, uh, after reading it, uh, I I was trying to think of something to come on here and say about it. And to be honest, I I I just don't I don't think there's anything I can say about his row your boat story. I I don't think there's anything I could say that would would add anything to what he has already said. Um, about it. I definitely couldn't describe it to you any better than he could. So I, instead of trying to explain to you what it is, I'm going to put a brief quote uh, or semi-brief quote up on the screen right now uh, where PJ Fleck describes to you uh, what row the boat means, where it came from, the origin. Here it is right here. Now, P.J. Fleck is probably one of the most well-respected coaches in all of college football by other coaches, by uh, his players, other players, the fans, the media. I don't know of anybody that uh, ever has had anything bad to say about P.J. Fleck, one of the most well-respected guys in all of college football. And uh, after reading the Row Your Boat story, I have even more respect uh, for P.J. Fleck than I had before. And I'm a little bit embarrassed and ashamed that I hadn't taken the time to to uh, look into that prior to uh, today. Uh, anyway, shout out to all the Minnesota Golden Gophers fans. I hope you enjoy today's preview uh, of Minnesota, which we're going to get to right now. Good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also. And two, in addition to that as well, hey, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Did you know that I post college football videos almost every single day of the year? It's true. I swear it's true. I have this channel where I upload all sorts of videos throughout the year. And then I have the second channel. Don't forget about the second channel. Uh, The name of the second channel is Uncle Lou on YouTube. All the live shows are on the second channel. That's right. I do, what do I do? Five, six, seven live shows a week. Have a night show. I have a morning show. I'll put a link in the description of this video to the second channel. If for some reason you've just found this channel recently and you were unaware of all the live shows in the second channel, click the link, check it out, subscribe to the second channel. We do a call-in show at night. I take calls from all over. Then we have a morning show I do in the morning with a co-host of mine, BVD, who happens to be a Tennessee fan. Check out the second channel, link in the description down below. All right, Jacob O, here comes your Minnesota Golden Gophers preview and prediction video game by game. Thank you for supporting the channel over on the Patreon page. Jacob, it means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. 
If anybody wants to check the Patreon page out, there's a link down there for that too. Feel free to click it and check it out. All right, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Copious notes here and two and also an addition to that as well. Yeah, uh, man, a little early. Oh, yeah, Uncle Lou gets up at crack of dawn. I said, listen, uh, I work 25 hours a day out here. But Minnesota Golden Gophers, Jacob O, here we go, buddy. P.J. Fleck going into his fourth year, right, at Minnesota. Came from Western Michigan. More on that in a minute. Fourth year at Minnesota after last year, 11-2, and two, amazing season. They gave him a raise, extension. Uh, who didn't see that coming? Locked him up through 20. 26. 11 and 2 last year, 10 and 2 in the regular season, 11 and 2 after an Outback Bowl win over Auburn, Minnesota barely missing out on a New Year's 6 bowl. Uh steady improvement over the first 3 years for PJ Fleck in Minnesota. First year there, uh let's see did I write this down. Uh blah, 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 5 and 7 in 17, 7 and 6 in 18, 11 and 2 in 19, right? 11 win season. How far back do you have to go to find another 11 win season for Minnesota? 1905. That's right. Way back in 1905, 115 years ago, was the last time Minnesota won 11 or more games. An amazing accomplishment for PJ Fleck last year at Minnesota. Uh, in fact, they've only had one season between 1905 and and last year, where they even won 10 games, and that was back in, uh, was that 20, 2003? I think it was 2003. I may be off I may be off on the year. I think it was 2003. Anyway, so not very many 10 or more win seasons have come from Minnesota in the last 115 years. Only two. 10 wins uh, 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 several years ago and 11 wins back in 1905. An amazing job for P.J. Fleck, losing on the road to Iowa and then at home to Wisconsin at the end of the year. And that Iowa loss was tough. It was a close, hard-fought game. And if you remember, the week before that was a huge home game for Minnesota against Penn State. No one, well, I don't want to say no one. Even that late into the season, Minnesota was, what, 7-0, 8-0, I think, something like that, when they got ready to play uh, host Penn State uh, at home. Not very many people were buying into Minnesota when that Penn State game came around. And most people, myself included, if I remember right, picked Minnesota to go in there, uh, Penn State to go in there and win. Didn't happen. Minnesota got a huge win knocking off Penn State at home. They turned around the following week and had to make a tough trip to Iowa, and they caught the L. Closing things out with a loss to Wisconsin before winning, like I mentioned, the Outback Bowl against the Barn. So a great year for P.J. Fleck in Minnesota by any standard or determination. I mean, just an unbelievable season. He came from Western Michigan. Maybe this is a theme in this video. This is something else I'm embarrassed and ashamed, ashamed about. I had completely forgot that he took Western Michigan to a New Year's Six Bowl. I had completely forgot about that. Did you guys remember that? He was at Western Michigan for uh, how long was he there? Four years, I think. One win his first year. Eight wins his second year. Eight wins his third year. And then his last year there, an 11-win season and a trip to the Cotton Bowl, a New Year's Six Bowl for Western Michigan where they lost to Wisconsin 24-16. I had completely forgot about that. Uh, so this guy, not a one-hit wonder. This, it appears this guy really knows what he's doing. I've made a lot of comments about Minnesota leading up to doing this video when I have done videos for other teams. And I've said, you know, I have no way they get to 10 wins again. I don't know. I, I may have been wrong. We're going to find out when we get to the schedule, but this doesn't appear to be a fluke or a gimmick to me. Anyway, uh, back to business here. Let's look at the recruiting because that's usually what I talk about when I say, I don't know Minnesota get back to 10 wins. Because here's what you hear me say all the time. Almost any team can have like one year, at, you know, sort of out of nowhere where they win more than 10 games, right? Maybe you get a bunch of juniors and seniors coming back that are more talented than the ones you're used to having. They're used to playing together. Maybe the schedule lines up, whatever the case, and they can get 10 or 11 wins. But to do it consistently in the Power Five, you have to recruit at an elite level, top 20, right? Maybe not. Listen to these recruiting classes uh, at Minnesota over the last four seasons. That's what makes up the majority of the 2020 roster is going to be the last four recruiting classes. Now, I use 24-7 sports. So if you want to use something different, that's fine. I, I just use 24-7 every single time I talk about recruiting so that I can be consistent from video to video. I'm not trying to convince anybody they're better or worse than anybody else. 2019, the 45th ranked class in America, 10th 
in the Big Ten. And they went 11 and 2. 2018 class, 38th in America, 7th in the Big Ten. 11 and 2 last year. 2017, 59th ranked class in America, 12th in the Big Ten, right? 14 teams, 12th in the Big Ten. 2016, 46 recruiting class in America, 8th in the Big Ten. According to the 24-7 Team Talent Composite Index in 2019, this is a ranking they put out based on a team's overall talent, right? Is it 100% accurate? No. Uh, you're going to have transfers, injuries, all, all these kinds of stuff that can affect that. Players that don't live up to their recruiting billing, players that exceed their recruiting ranking. So I get all that. It's not 100% accurate, but it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good, uh, I, it gives you a pretty good idea of a team's overall talent, right? According to 24-7, Minnesota had the 46th most talented team in America last year and went 11-2, and two, finished in the AP Top 10. To tell you how amazing that is, Florida State had one of the top 10 most talented teams. Texas had one of the top 10 most talented teams. Southern Cal had one of the top 10 most talented teams. They came nowhere close to having the season that P.J. Fleck had at Minnesota, finishing 10th uh, in the final AP poll. An amazing season. An amazing season. Let's take a look at the roster for Minnesota this year, though. Can they keep it going? Do they lose too much? Who's coming back? Let's find out. Start with the offense here. Eight starters return. Listen to me. I want you to listen. Come closer if you need to. There you go. Could Minnesota, I can't believe I'm about to say this. Could Minnesota in 2020 have the second best offense in all of the Big Ten. Could it happen? Yes. We'll start with running backs here. I, I usually start with the quarterbacks, but I'm going to start with the running backs here. Now, you lose Rodney Smith. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. He's gone. He's your all-time, all-purpose yards leader. That's a big deal. Minnesota, like most teams nowadays, likes to use a two-running back system uh, at a minimum. Minnesota, no different. Losing him is going to hurt. However, you get back Muhammad Ibrahim. Now, he led your team in rushing, rushing back in 2018, over 1,000 yards. So we know this guy is good, and he played a lot last year too, a ton last year. I mean, this guy's an amazing running back. So you get him back. So you're not falling off a cliff at the running back position. You do have to find a number two, a steady, reliable, productive number two. You got to find that. Can you? We'll find out. But Ibrahim is a uh, is a more than good enough number one running back. What about wide receivers? Sort of a similar story. You lose Tyler Johnson. That's going to hurt. He set several school records for you at Minnesota. It is going to be hard to replace him. Good thing you have the Big Ten Receiver of the Year returning in 2020, Rashad Bateman. Do you know how many NFL wide receivers Ohio State has? And Rashad Bateman was the receiver of the year in the Big Ten, and he returns. So, yeah, that's terrible. You lose Tyler Johnson, but you have Rashad Bateman. Now, you got to find a number two. A number one receiver is always going to be better if you have a good number two. The, the, the next guy in line, Chris Altman-Bell, he only had 28 catches last year, so he's going to have to take a big step forward in terms of numbers and production and all that kind of stuff in 2020. Uh, I think, anyway, if you want Rashad Bateman to have the same type of year he had last year. What helped Rashad Bateman was the fact that you couldn't double you couldn't double cover him on every play because you had to worry about Tyler Johnson on the other side. You got to find somebody this year to pull on the other side of Rashad Bateman. Is it going to be Chris Altman Bell? Is it going to be somebody else? We'll find out. But you, I mean, I mean listen, anytime you have the returning uh, the, 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 uh, returning conference of the year receiver coming back. That's not a negative. So that's a positive. All right. Now let's talk about the quarterback, Tanner Morgan. This guy comes, any, anytime you get your quarterback back, that's obviously a positive, right? He's got a, a one more year's worth of experience now than he did last year. And it's not like he was bad last year. Second team, second team, all big 10. Uh, clearly Justin Fields, first team, he just ridiculous 50 touchdowns in that, uh, whatever it was, two or three interceptions. Uh, ran for a bunch of yards. That was an obvious pick there, but 
If I would have asked you going into last year, tell me who's going to be the best two quarterbacks in the Big Ten, there was a lot of people that would have uh, picked Justin Fields. I'm not sure how many people would have picked Tanner Morgan, but he's second team, all Big Ten QB last year. He comes back, first quarterback in Minnesota history to have 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns in a season. You got to assume those numbers are going to go up this year. Maybe, and i get to that in a minute, offensive line, all five, all five of your offensive linemen return. You do have a new offensive coordinator this year, and this could be the problem. This, uh, well, we don't know that for sure, but anyway, it, 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 it it's always a risk to change coaches. It just always is. Now, it happens all the time. Some teams go on, they don't miss a beat. Some teams fall off a little bit when they do it. We don't know what's going to happen with Minnesota till we see. You bring in Mike Sanford Jr. We'll see how Tanner Morgan and him can sort of coexist. How much of the old system do they keep? How much of you know, quote unquote, his style, does he want to inject into this offense? We'll find out. But eight starters returning, the entire offensive line, uh, the Big Ten receiver of the year, the second team quarterback, um, a running back who led your team in rushing two seasons ago, over a thousand yards. This is a loaded offense and could 100% be the second best offense in the Big Ten behind, of course, uh, Ohio State, who I think will probably have the best offense in the Big Ten. This is absolutely unbelievable on offense. All right, now on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to go in somewhat of a transition in 2020. You lose a lot of players in production from that side of the ball. Only five starters returning uh, over there. You lose five of your top six tacklers. You lose probably your best player on that side of the ball and Antoine, Will uh, Win uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. Safety left early for the NFL. You lose your middle linebacker, uh, Thomas Barber. He's gone. He's sort of the quarterback of your defense there. So you got some serious pieces you got to replace on that side of the ball. And this is where the recruiting uh, could hurt you. Now, we'll see. Like I said, a lot of times these players that are three stars end up playing like four or five stars. I, you know, I get it. They can be coached up. And clearly, P.J. Fleck has shown the ability on both sides of the ball to coach players up. You're going to need a lot of that in 2020 if you want the defense to be as good as it was last year. You, uh, Antoine Winfield Jr., like I mentioned, gone. You do have some uh, returning experience in the secondary. I'm less concerned about losing him than I am that middle linebacker. I guess you guys are going to put Mariano Sori Marin in there. I'm probably saying that wrong. Reason being, I didn't name him. So uh, you got to remember that. His parents named him. It's just my, not, uh, my job to try to pronounce the name wrong, and I'm probably doing a pretty good job of that. He comes back uh, he'll probably play in the middle. He's played all three linebacker positions, middle and both outside uh, positions, but he'll probably be uh, in the middle this year uh, from everything I read. Nose tackle, Micah, do uh, treachery? What the hell is it? Oh, oh, Treadway, treachery. I, I, not, not only can I not pronounce names, I can't even read uh, my own handwriting half the time. Micah, do Treadway uh, at nose tackle. He's your only returning starter along the defensive line. That's it. So again, another area where you've got some serious holes to fill on the defensive side of the ball. And then again, back to the recruiting, how good are these players going to be that you end up plugging in in 2020 to replace the starters that are gone from 2019? We don't know. If the past has told us anything, though, they're likely going to play higher than their recruiting ranking. And that's just what P.J. Flex seems to do, right? Defensive end, Baye Mafe. Uh, listen, if you have a name that's almost impossible to pronounce and you want to play college football, give P.J. Fleck a call. Defensive end, Baye Mafe. Now, he could have a big year. It, 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 okay year. Last year, I think he had three or four sacks. But uh, if you listen to P.J. Fleck talk this offseason about this guy, he's been ranting and raving about this guy. He's a super athletic guy, one of these defensive ends with a huge wingspan, very athletic, a 40-inch vertical, if you don't know how impressive that is. Go to the NFL Combine site on the internet and check some other people's verticals. But that's ridiculous. A 40-inch uh, vertical from a guy his size. Uh, he could be a dominant pass rusher for Minnesota this year. So uh, offense loaded. Ton of weapons coming back at every position group. All five offensive linemen return. A thousand-yard rusher returns. The all-Big Ten receiver of the year returns. Uh, Tanner Morgan return. Just loaded over there. Defense a lot more question marks. We'll see uh, how much that may or may not hurt Minnesota in 2020. All right, I'm going to put the schedule up on the screen. We're going to go through it game by game and pick a winner and a loser for each week of the season for Minnesota. Let's go. All right, you start off with a couple of non-con games at home against lower classification schools, FAU and Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech, you play on a Thursday. 
Sometimes weekday games will concern me. Not against teams like this, though. You start off 2-0. Uh, there's no reason at all either of these two games should even be competitive or close. Uh, you, you'll be able to rotate a bunch of guys in and out in this game defensively, try to find what works and doesn't work there. You know, we missed spring practice. So starting off with two teams like this in 2020, not the worst idea in the world, right? Uh, right. When you have to replace those many uh, pieces and parts on defense, you want as much practice as you can get. Hell, you want as much practice as you can get regardless, right? Coaches love practice. There's a reason they do. It's because it makes your team better. So we all missed spring football. Every team missed uh, off-season conditioning and all that just now getting uh, cranked back up at most schools. You start off with two lower classification schools. So they, the, a lot of these guys, these new faces on defense can get some on-the-job training week one and two. I think this is a huge benefit to Minnesota in 2020 to play these. Uh, I don't want to call them nobody teams, but let's just be real. Minnesota should handle those two without a problem. You're two and oh. Now you got a huge game here on a Friday. Now, all I can say is lucky. I think you're lucky this is a home game. Road teams do not fare well on these uh, weekday games. Just look over the course of recent history on, in college football at some of these games played on Thursdays, and especially, for some reason, games played on Fridays. R road teams, the better road team, a lot of times, loses on these Friday games. I'm not saying Iowa's better than Minnesota. Remember, this was a great game from last year. Right after the Penn State game, you traveled down to Ames to take on Iowa, and you lost. So this is a revenge game for Minnesota. I think this is huge that you get them at home. I think you beat Iowa at home on a Friday. You're 1-0 in the Big Ten, 3-0 overall, heading into your final non-con game at home against BYU. Now, BYU will be your toughest non-con test of the year, but BYU is not a great team. And worse than that, they're a terrible institution. Uh, forget the football team. They're just a backwards university. They're, they're a backwards group of people, honestly, uh, the BYU People, it's just true. They're the Fred Flintstones, uh, Fred Flintstones of college football. They're stuck in the Stone Ages. These people, uh, which is why they're not in a Power Five conference. They were this close to getting into the Big Twelve several years ago, but all the presidents in the Big Twelve said thanks, but no thanks. We're not interested in your bigotry and hatred, BYU. Stay out there, do your own thing uh, in Utah, and that's what they went ahead and did. But you got to play them at home. I think you get the win again. You're four and zero. Oh. Now you got to go on the road, uh, and this is where. This is where Minnesota's schedule starts to get difficult for me. Back-to-back -back conference road games are hard. I don't care what conference you're talking about, and I don't care what two teams you have to travel to play. Back-to-back -back road games are never easy. I'll say the same thing I say about Thursday and Friday games. Go back and look at teams that play back-to-back -back road games. They almost always lose one of them. Almost. I said almost. Okay? Now, your first road game here is at Maryland. Maryland's an interesting team. I think Maryland is a team that is trending up. Now, they started really low. Okay, so trending up doesn't mean I think they're a top 10 team. Look at some of the recruiting they've done in the last couple of years. It's been a little bit strange. They got like the number one wide receiver to commit there. Of course, they got Tua's little brother to transfer there from Alabama. Doesn't look like he'll play this year, but Interesting to keep an eye on, I think, the Maryland Terrapins going forward. They still have the ugliest uniforms in all of college football, but I'm not sure or convinced that that affects outcome of games. You got to play there. I think you beat Maryland. Now, this game may be more interesting a year or two down the road or whatever than it is um, now. Well, actually, I don't even think you play them every year, but anyway, that's not. I think Maryland will be you know, better in a year or two than they are now. I think you get the win on the road at Maryland, but I don't think this is a gimme. Um, I try to pick upsets on all of these things because we just usually see upsets, right? Uh, almost every team in college football every single year loses to at least one team you thought they were going to beat, and then they end up beating at least one team you thought they were going to lose to. Take take Minnesota, for example. If you'd asked 100 people at the beginning of the season who's winning, Minnesota or Penn State, almost all of that 100 people would have said Penn State. If you would have asked uh, 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 100 people about Minnesota and Iowa, uh, the week before that game, a lot of people picking Minnesota and you lost. So you see what I'm saying here. Weird things happen to almost every single team. So I don't think this is a gimme, but it's your first road game. I think you go on the road and get the job done. Now you got to come back and play Wisconsin, a game that really wasn't even that competitive last year, which was kind of disappointing, That, uh, but it wasn't 
I think they beat you again. Now, yeah, they lose Jonathan Taylor, but come on. Have you been paying attention to college football over the last 10 years? Wisconsin's going to have an NFL offensive line, and they're going to have a running back that's going to get 1,500-plus yards. It's just going to happen. I don't think they're going to be able to replace Jonathan Taylor. I'm, I'm not here to tell you they got a running back that's fixing to go for 2,200 or anything like that, but their total rushing yards for the season could 100% be very close to the same as it was last year. Uh, maybe Jonathan Taylor got gets to 2,200 last year. Maybe two running backs get, make up that difference this year, but I don't think anybody doubts um, Wisconsin's ability to run the ball. You got to play them there. That's not easy to do. Uh, the, uh, the Camp Randall, the jump around thing, it's a crazy atmosphere there. You're on a roll, but again, the, the second of back-to-back -back road games here at Maryland, I gave you the win at Wisconsin. I'm giving you your first loss of the season. Would I be shocked if Maryland won this game? No, I think, Mar I, uh, not Maryland, I'm sorry, Minnesota won this game. No, I wouldn't be shocked. I think Minnesota's going to be a pretty good team this year. I just think you dropped this one on the road at Wisconsin. Close, tough, hard-fought game. Uh, you're sitting on one loss. Then you got to come back home and play Michigan. This is another game that's tough, hard, and difficult for me to figure out. And I caught a lot of hell when I did my Michigan preview uh, for the way I chose this game, too. I'm not high on Michigan this year. Uh, I have been the last several years. I'm not this year. You'll probably be favored in this game, honestly. But this is one of those times where something weird is going to happen, and I have Michigan beating you at your place. Coming off the back-to-back -back road games, this this home game, this Michigan home game is sandwiched between four road games. You're coming up with the at Illinois, at Michigan State after this. Of those five games, four on the road and one at home, I think you go. I think you. I think you lose two of them at Wisconsin and home to Michigan. I think you rebound and win on the road at Illinois. Um, Illinois is a team that had a huge upset victory last year, beating, uh, and they knocked off Wisconsin, I think it was, right? They've got Lovey Smith coaching out there to the Black, shout out Black Santa Claus. Uh, they beat Wisconsin. Not beating you, though. You get the win on the road against the Fighting Illini. And then on the road at Michigan State, they've got a new coaching staff, got rid of D'Antonio last year. They bring in, uh, Mel Tucker, isn't it? Uh, yeah, they're bringing Mel Tucker there at Michigan, uh, State, former DB coach and defensive coordinator for Kirby Smart at Georgia, and out of Colorado for a while. Uh, now he lands um, in the Big Ten, gets his first Power Five job at Michigan State. I'll be rooting for him. He's a good guy. I wish him nothing but the best, but he's not beating you in year one, P.J. Fleck. I've got P.J. Fleck getting it done. You went on the road at Michigan State. So to me, this is a tough five stretch of games because four road games in a five-week period at Maryland, at Wisconsin, at Illinois, and at Michigan State. Home game with Michigan sandwiched in between. I think you go three and two in those five games. If you disagree with me about Wisconsin and Michigan, fine. Pick any other two games in that five-game stretch and give yourself an L there. I think you go three and two in that five-game stretch. I'm sorry. This isn't going to be what Minnesota fans want to hear, but this is legitimately what I think is going to happen. Back-to-back uh, -back road games and then a home game against Purdue. Purdue is my uh, surprise pick this year in the Big Ten. Not to win it or anything like that, but I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, they get Rondell Moore back. Um, they threw for a billion yards last year without Rondell Moore. I think Purdue is going to beat some teams this year that people don't see coming. I think you're one of them. I think Purdue upsets you in your own place. I think you dropped this one to Purdue. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. And you have a bye week. It's a little late in the year, ain't it, to have this bye week? Sure would be nice to have this bye week during that five-game stretch where you have four road games, but you don't. You have them back into the season, middle of November. You finish things up with two more conference games, one at home against Northwestern, one on the road against Nebraska. Nebraska's another team I was wrong about last year. Northwestern, I like their coach, too. He sort of reminds me of P.J. Fleck in that he's able to get a lot out of a little. Uh, he, he gets every last drip of juice out of the orange when he squeezes it. Uh, Fitzgerald does. PJ Fleck is the same way. I was disappointed in Northwestern last year. I'm not sold on them this year either. I think you win at home against Northwestern. Then you go on the road, play Nebraska. I'm not falling for any more Scott Frost tricks. I'm not buying into the Adrian Martinez hype. Maybe I'll be wrong and he'll be amazing. But last year was just an utter failure for Scott Frost and, honestly, Adrian Martinez. Neither performed up to expectations. Maybe they will this year. I don't know. But I've got you finishing out the regular season with a win on the road against Big Red. You beat the Corn Huskers in Lincoln to finish up the regular season. 
nine and three. I know that's not what you want to hear. People always want to build on whatever they did the year before. And you, you, you definitely could, Minnesota fan. You definitely could. You finished the regular season 10 and 2 last year. You could definitely finish the regular season 10 and 2, or maybe even 11 and 1 this year, without question. I'm not knocking Minnesota in any way. Um, I just think it's going to go the other direction. I think instead of improving by one game in 2020, I think you take one step back in 2020. Maybe the defense being so inexperienced costs you a game um, here or there. Uh, I think you go nine and three. You still got a chance to get to 10 wins, even if I'm right, uh, with a bowl win. And let's be real, you've got a shot um, at the Big Ten title. You've got a legitimate shot at the Big Ten title. You may be the favorite in the Big Ten West. Uh, one, uh, you know, Honestly, Wisconsin, I think, may have something to say about it. If Nebraska can finally get it together, maybe they make a run. But Minnesota's right there. Uh, in the thick of things to compete for the Big Ten West with a shot to play probably either Ohio State or Penn State out of the East. And once you make it to that game, literally anything can happen. You're in a one-game scenario. Yes, Ohio State and Penn State are better than Minnesota, I think, this year. But in a one-game scenario, anything can happen. So you make it to that title game, you roll the dice, uh, and you see where you land. Good luck to the Minnesota Golden Gophers in 2020. Again, one of the most amazing out of the blue seasons we've seen in a long time last year. PJ Fleck leading them to the 10 and 2 regular season, 11 and 2 after a bowl win over to Barn. Can they do it again in 2020? Yes, they can. Um, but prediction videos are no fun if you just pick chalk all the way down. You got to pick a few upsets here and there. That's what I tried to do. This is my honest um, opinion. This is really what I think is going to happen with Minnesota. I think they take a slight step back going 9-3 and three in the regular season. They'll still make a great bowl game. That's still a great year for Minnesota. 9-3 and three could be uh, good enough to win the West, depending on what happens with, Wish, um, with uh, Wisconsin and, uh, and Nebraska. All right, there you go. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good morning.